Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party review. In today's video I'm taking a look at the latest offering from Waijang. This is their M03 Battle Hornet. Uh, this is basically their interpretation of uh, a masterpiece style-ish Bumblebee to go along with their Hound and Evasion Optimus Prime. Now, for all intents and purposes, this is basically a slightly oversized bootleg of Savio Prime's custom of the Battle Blades Bumblebee. It looks pretty much identical. Nice box. Come on the back there, and we've got Bumblebee on the back and a picture of him in his alt mode. I'm sorry, sorry, Hornet, not Bumblebee. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Comes in a plastic clamshell. Uh, with a set of instructions and here we have him out of the package now do we really need another bumblebee i mean they've released this at the same time as hasbro and takara released their mpm3 bumblebee uh, and that's the best version of bumblebee that i own um so i thought i'd check out this because why zhang normally have some nice little tweaks, uh, especially their hound. Their hound was stunning. I absolutely love him. Uh, but I've got him out of the box, and I must say, I'm slightly underwhelmed. It's a bit of a mess at the back here. Um, initially, this section was really hunched up in the box, and this is basically flipped around so it's facing upwards. They must have intended it to kind of be like this with the wings at the back there. You've got these sections here that go across the neck. The chest can move up and down quite freely. Uh, so you can kind of pose it and angle it as you see fit. Uh, you generally have bits hanging down though. There doesn't seem to be any particular place to hide all of these bits at the back here, which <sighs> it's not good on Wei Zhang's part. They've kind of modified it and still left things hanging off. And when you try and reference the instructions to find out what they intended us to do around the back, they like, okay, right, yep, that looks fine. Okay, right, they've got the doors out, yep. And then you come here and it's not like this at all. They've got this section completely flipped up and the doors are down. Uh, so it's nothing like what they've got in the first two images. Uh, so, <laughs> so I honestly have no idea what the back is kind of meant to look like. Uh, your guess, <laughs> I guess is as good as mine. But um, you get the idea. I mean, it's Bumblebee, isn't it? So I've tried to get him as close as I can to look like uh, Bumblebee. I believe this is based on the 2007 movie or... Uh, I think he changed at the end of that movie, didn't he? Or it might have been the Revenge of the Fallen mold. I believe Battle Blades came out, Revenge of the Fallen. So maybe it's based on this, which is in itself slightly odd because they released Hound from Age of Extinction. They released uh, Evasion Prime based on the Age of Extinction version. You would have thought that they'd have done the Age of Extinction Bumblebee, but I guess they just do whatever they can get their hands on. <laughs> Of course, the obvious choice for a comparison is the MPM3 Bumblebee. I was actually expecting the Waijang to be slightly taller, but as it stands, you know, they're not far off at all. I like the paint more on the Waijang. We've actually got some really nice detailing. Love this kind of coppery tinge around the crotch area and all of the panels are painted. I mean, just look at those chrome rims as well. They haven't left anything untouched. I should probably open those up to give them a little bit more stability, shouldn't I? Uh, even the cogs on the inside there, inside the crotch, that's all painted up. The underside here, we can get to the abdominal section, and these sections here all move up. Love the pistons that they've painted up as well. We can bend the elbow, the inner elbow again has this nice 
coppery color, the wrists rotate, uh, but I can't bring the wrists down. So we're using this constant handshake pose there. Uh, we can bring the thumb and finger out so we can kind of throttle people and hold them up in their choke hold. But unfortunately we can't uh, actually make the arms look natural. The wrist doesn't drop down enough. You can drop it down like this. Uh, that's the best we're going to do. We have the weapons that can be brought round and flipped up. And again, the weapons are nicely painted. We have painted up eyes there as opposed to light piped eyes. And we do get the battle mask option as well. This piece here just lifts up and pulls forwards and goes down over the face, although it doesn't really want to hold into location. I mean, in my opinion, the MPM Bumblebee's mask does win hands down there. This gaping hole here is uh, quite off-putting. There's no way of bringing any more of this helmet section down either which is actually a shame, you know, I would have liked something just to cover up this gap on the inside of the head, but uh, I guess beggars can't be choosers. You know what, I really can't make sense of this backpack section. I've even flipped it round and tried to like tuck these sections under. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know, I'm trying to make it look nice, but uh, it's kind of fighting me. Articulation on Hornet though is actually really good. The head you can look up and down, we can go left, right, you've got some nice quizzical tilting. <laughs> Sounded more like Doyle from Popeye, didn't it? <laughs> um, we've got this nice movement there on the chest, you've got the ab sections which can also move up and down. These here move independently as well so we can kind of angle them as we see fit the shoulders are on a soft ratchet they also go up and down we have some movement there which is hindered by these wing sections we have upper bicep rotation and a bend at the elbow on a ratchet as previously mentioned the hands do rotate on a ball and they do have a pivot inwards and outwards and they are pinned and the hands can open and close like so. The waist is actually quite free, it can rotate quite nicely, uh, no real abdominal crunch there. Legs are on a friction joint going forwards and backwards, nice bend at the knee there. All of this section here is kind of kibbletastic and does get in the way somewhat. There's an upper thigh rotation. We have this bend on the under knee as well so there's a double jointed knee section there we have the pivot going forwards and backwards I do love how that looks on those cogs in there all of those moving up and down and you've got a ratchet on the foot and there's no pivots there on the feet at all I thought knowing why Zhang they would have given us some form of pivoting there but alas there is nothing uh, that's actually really surprising. Normally they're pretty good at that. Uh, don't get me wrong, I mean, B can still strike a pose. It's just, I don't know, it just feels a little bit lacklustre on their behalf. It doesn't feel like they've done enough for this to be part of their kind of masterpiece movie line. On the upside, his flip out axe is quite nice. Some serious fast action there, look. Oh yeah, <laughs> take that. Uh, Scale-wise, being the same sort of size as the MPMB, he does scale pretty well with MPM Prime, as well as the previous offering from Wai Zhang in the form of their detective, AKA Hound. I think the main issue I have with this is it just has that standard transformation of the wheels on the feet. I love how the new version of B tucks all of the wheels away and makes it 
much more screen accurate. Yes, Wei Zhang have bombarded this guy with amazing paint applications, but in essence, it is still that Battle Blades Bumblebee, which was readily available for a fraction of the cost that we're paying for this figure. Now let's get him transformed up into his vehicle mode and see how that fares. You want to open up the gun section, flip the gun around, and then just close these panels back off and do the same with the axe. Flip the axe blade around and then tuck that under. Tuck these hands inwards. Come to the abs and just pull those away from the spinal cord, which allows this entire front section to be freed up. Unfold all of this backpack mess, depending on whether you have it up this way or up the other way. You need to have it basically facing downwards. So this is going to form the back of the car and you want to unfold all of this kind of windscreen mess as well and just kind of pull those out of the way for now. Pull these neck collar sections inward. Tilting the head back allows this piece to come up and over the head, which allows us to bring the shoulder sections inwards bring the wheel piece around and there's a tab here and there's a tab on the shoulder compressing the shoulder in allows us to bring the wheels and tab those in and this piece just comes in and that sits against bumblebee's face we can now start to straighten up the front end of the vehicle just pushing and tabbing all of these pieces inwards i'm hoping that this tidies up a bit more because there's a lot of gaps there Make sure the weapon sections are rotated inwards on the car so the point is facing the front of the engine block and then we can just bring those up and they just slide inside this tab here. Bring these window tabs around to the front as well as the front end of the vehicle and these are on sliding tabs so we can slide this up which pushes the windshield against the roof section of the vehicle. Rocking this inner hinge backwards allows this all to line up accordingly. And we can just tab all of this front end in. Oh dear, Wai Zhang, at the moment this is looking a little panel-rific. Come to Bumblebee's back end, you want to unfold the back of the leg section here. Collapse this upper hinge like so. This foot is going to come around and bring all of this in nice and tidily. And then this is going to come around and just tab in. And once that's all tabbed in, you can then bring that rocker section back over so it slides back in to the lower torso and then just collapse all of these and tab those in. Then we can just bring this rear end section. The rear of the boot is on a hinge there. We can bring this piece down and it's just a matter of now going around and trying to tab this mess. <laughs> now that's pretty much what it is. Trying to tab this all in accordingly. <sighs> I'll be right back. Here we have him all transformed up into his vehicle mode. It's still quite tabtastic. I've tried to tab absolutely everything in as best I could. It's all very well making a car which appears to be more kind of robot accurate uh, by adding loads of these folds and bends and twists and turns, but it really does affect the vehicle mode somewhat. Um, I, don't know. I mean, it rolls, it does look nice. These wheels especially look really quite clean. Uh, the bonnets, I like how that's raised. We do have almost a kind of Chevy logo going on there. Uh, it's not awful, 
<laughs> but at the same time, uh, it was a nightmare to get everything pegged in. You push here and this side comes out, you push here and the roof comes out. Uh, it just doesn't seem to really want to line up amazingly. The underside doesn't look awful. I mean, you've got some nice paint applications there. Uh, um, what do you think? I mean, is it worth that sacrifice? Personally, I don't think so. Uh, MPM does it a lot better. Yeah, it's still quite panel-tastic. But I just think the alt mode does look more like what we'd expect for Bumblebee. I mean, if we bring in Masterpiece Sideswipe as well, just to get an idea of scale. I mean, it's a big figure. I love the rubber in the tyres. I mean, these are really big, chunky wheels. Uh, not a huge fan of the blacked out windows either. But at the same time, I mean, I know they are actually still translucent plastic. And it does kind of take away from having to look at all the ugly transforming mechanisms on the inside there. The brake light, tail lights at the back there do look like they're actually on. Uh, very nice high gloss paint used there. And at the same time, they've painted up like the die cast and the plastic, and you do have slightly different shades. Again, running around, you've got your fuel cap section here. It, it, it's okay, but that's exactly it. It's just okay. The other Waijang products have given me that wow factor. I mean, the Waijang oversized version of the last night Megatron is a lot cheaper than this and huge in comparison. I just think, in essence, this is just a repaint and they've done the Megatron a lot better. And here we have them alongside the MPM Bumblebee. Uh, I'm sorry, Waijang. I think that Battle Hornet is too little, too late. It would have been good. Yeah, uh, you know, if we didn't have this MPMB. Yes, mine still has the dash fault. I need to tighten the screw behind here. Uh, but it's still the best version of Bumblebee to date, in my opinion. Sorry, I've just literally transformed him up and I haven't tabbed everything in correctly. How very unprofessional of me. <laughs> but it still looks a damn side better than Battle Hornet. Uh, it's a shame, really. I mean, weight-wise, he weighs 224 grams. That's 7.9 ounces. Whereas Masterpiece B weighs 195 grams. That's 6.8 ounces. So, I mean, the die cast and use of rubber and materials, it does make a difference, but this is just proof that adding weight to a figure doesn't necessarily make it a better figure. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Battle Hornet from Wai Zhang. Uh, I'd like to thank the guys at TF Direct for making this review possible. I know I've been hard on this, but I'm a huge fan of Wai Zhang. I have supported their products from the get-go, back when they were doing the oversized Throttlebots, uh, which I'm still waiting for, actually. I'm still waiting for the last Throttlebot, and I'll review the big combiner when it's finally made. But I, I just can't back this. I feel they've skimped out, they've hurried it out, and it's just not up to their standard. Why Zhang are the guys that gave us the MPP-10 or the M-01? This, this could just be any old knockoff. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If by any chance you do still want to purchase this, I've included a link in the description below which takes you through to the TF Direct site. And until next time from myself and Battle Hornet, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, good.